Thank you. Hey, folks. It's not quite good morning yet, so I guess good afternoon. Um, I'm still stuck on San Francisco time. Um, I've had a lot of coffee, though, and some sleep, so I'm a little jittery and I have to pee a lot, but I'm, I'm mostly awake. Um, so, who am I? Um, I'm a back-end engineer for Spotify. Um, I am based in San Francisco, as I said. Um, I am also um, vice chair of uh, the PSF, along with uh, Naomi Cedar. Um, side note, if you are a PSF member, um, just a quick announcement, there is a PSF members meeting uh, Thursday at 6 p.m. Forget the room, but it's on the online schedule. Um, and if you're interested in becoming a PSF member, you should come talk to me. Um, last bit, um, I'm also the founder of Pi Ladies of San Francisco, and I'm one of the main like, lead organizers of the global organization. And thank you. <laughs> um, since I had the stage, um, who here has actually heard of Pi Ladies? Maybe it's better to go, who has not heard of Pi Ladies? Okay, those hands will be down at the end of this paragraph. <laughs> um, so PyLadies is a mentorship group for women in the Python community. Um, it's open to women and friends, so it's open to everyone. Um, essentially, we're a loose group of meetups um, in various locations. Um, um, one on every continent except Antarctica, which is my new mission, <laughs> to go to Antarctica and start a PyLadies. Um, but what we do is um, we host Python workshops, um, speaker events, hack nights, coffee meetups, everything around Python and learning Python and, and development in general. And we welcome all experience levels. So I think there, there's one here in Spain, uh, I think based in Barcelona, um, that I highly encourage you to check out. Um, I also have a talk, another one, on a Thursday afternoon at 2.30. I forget, or I forget which room, I think the Education Summit room. Um, and that talk will be about PyLadies and, and more in-depth talk about um, what we're doing and how the work has actually been going and the effects that we've been seeing and the work that we still have to do. Um, so, who here has not heard of PyLadies? Uh, come on, I see two hands. Do you need more coffee like me? <laughs> all right, so I gave my spiel. Um, all right, so this talk, um, I will first give a quick introduction to, um, to Spotify um, over an overview of how we use data. Um, I'll go into um, sort of how we use metrics and how we came about to implement the, implementing them the, the agile way, and um, essentially what was learned along the way when my team implemented them, sort of the bigger picture. Um, and you can sit back. Uh, I'll give um, a link at the end of this presentation with the blog post and the slides. So you can just watch me rather than your computer or tablet or whatever. Um, all right, so what I basically want you to take away is metrics and tracking is super fun, but, but should you track all of it, everything that moves? And we as developers, um, we track everything like website visitors, referrals, how folks use our services, if our servers are even up. Um, we have a lot of tools at our disposal like um, New Relic, Graphite, um, Google Analytics, Sentry, PagerDuty, a bunch of other things. <laughs> we even track ourselves like steps and sleeping patterns, exercise, calories consumed, breathing, hair growth rate, I don't know. Like everything that you can, we track, right? Um, Maybe hopes to get some insights or just to feel better about ourselves. Um, but if, should you measure everything? And it's very easy to get lost in, that, in, the, in the forest, right? It's easy to lose the meeting and easy to lose the understanding of why you're measuring it in the first place. So to start, some background information about Spotify. Um, so we're just all on the same page. And also is how we use data. Um, so Spotify, streaming music service, um, we've updated our logo. This is the not the correct green, but I haven't gotten a new shirt yet. <laughs> um, so we've beta launched in 2007, and I think we came to Spain and some other parts of Europe in 2008. Um, and in 2011, we came to uh, the US. Um, we we're in about 58 countries. We have over uh, 20 million paid subscribers and 50 or 75 million active, monthly active users. We have over 30 million unique songs, not including compilation albums and such. And we add about uh, 20,000 songs a day. 
We also pay about 70 to 80 percent of our income to rights holders, totaling about three billion dollars to date. Um, while I work in a very small office um, in San Francisco with about five other developers, um, our main engineering offices are in Stockholm and in New York, um, with um, a lot of data and machine learning in Boston. Um, let's see. So as you can imagine, um, at Spotify, data is quite important. Um, these numbers that you see are only about a month old, and they, I have to check every time I do a presentation like this because they are always growing and growing fast. So we track uh, user data like signups and logins, activity within the application itself, even tweets like the good and the bad and the ugly. Um, we, have, uh, we also track server-generated data, um, including requests to various service, services, response times, response codes, among a million other things. Um, each squad owns what um, they want to collect, how and when, and how they will consume such of data. And we have analysts that run thousands of Hadoop jobs a day to glean insight from user activity, answering questions like how many paid subscribers do we have at this moment in time, or was this partnership financially beneficial to us? Engineers behind um, the platform watch usage rates to like our web APIs, we, have, we watch login failures, um, feature usage, et cetera. Um, we also have a data scientist in machine learning um, analyzing listening behavior, music, metadata, and trends that power the recommendations behind our features. Um, teams have actually started to analyze actual like audio signals and the sound of a song to pick up like genres, um, beats per minute or whatever, and uh, instruments played. Or um, yeah, uh, it's actually quite difficult to kind of pick up a few things from the audio signal itself, like um, like the mood. Like how do you classify and define a mood of a song? Um, but, but that's the stuff that we're sort of doing at Spotify. And this only um, scratches the surface um, of what we collect and what we pay attention to. Uh, we do use various technologies um, related to data, including Hadoop, as well as Cassandra, Postgres, and Elasticsearch. Um, all of our user data sits in Hadoop, um, which we run jobs against using our own Python library, or Crunch, Scalding, or Hive. Uh, we also use Spark, Tez, and Flink. Um, I've heard um, actually a lot of people use um, IPython with scikit-learn and um, pandas, and I've also discovered recently that we have our own IPython notebook server set up, so that's pretty cool. Um, on the back end side, um, some of our service activity actually gets parked in Elasticsearch, where, where we have Kibana set up, um, but the majority um, of service activity is actually in um, a homegrown system, of course, um, but we have open sourced it. It's called Fast Forward or FFWD, and it's um, written in Ruby, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yet, with all this setup, with all this technology, I'm really embarrassed to say that um, my team did a lot of development in the dark. Um, we were not tracking anything, and we did not know how successful our future integrations were. Um, we had no clue um, how our back-end services um, that we maintained, how they were holding up. Um, I do want to make note that um, a lot of squads in Spotify do track a lot of data, do pay attention to all of this. We're just sort of the black sheep, and I think it's partly because we were nine hours behind Stockholm and three hours behind New York. So this story, um, it's about um, self-discovery, um, how, how we became a better, more effective team. And uh, we did this by um, capitalizing on understanding our own data. Um, not everyone can be data scientists, mathematicians, statisticians, analysts, whatever. Um, but everyone can grasp um, why it's important when 70% of our users can't log in for whatever reason. And so this is a story of um, how our team finally developed and adapted the use of logging and metrics. Um, so you might know that Spotify, I'm very public about using um, Agile. Um, we actually have a few videos on YouTube that are very, very awesome, very entertaining and awesome, nicely done, that I highly encourage you to check out. But um, one key aspect of Agile is, is iteration, right? Uh, and we certainly iterate over our product. You might, be, <laughs> you might be as annoyed as I am when you open up the Spotify client on your desktop. It has a little blue banner asking you to update, and it comes like pretty much every single day, right? So <laughs> that's our Agile approach. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, we also iterate over ourselves as, as a team, as an individual, as a squad. I'm trying to find what works for, for us as a company, and us as a squad, and everything in between. Um, late last year, uh, my squad began um, 
participating in an internal program, it's very corporate speak, called Effective Quad Cir um, Squad Circle. <laughs> um, and its purpose was to hone in on the squad itself, how we can be more effective. And I actually found that um, to be very ben beneficial for myself and for the team. So what it was is essentially monthly challenges um, to figure out the team's current condition, um, essentially not tracking anything, not knowing what's going on, and comparing it to the desired condi um, condition, condition in terms of delivering the product, a feature, service, whatever that we were meant to. Um, the, the following explanation may sound very like uh, project manager -y, business oriented -y, but um, I found it very useful when implementing metrics. Um, and I also find myself definitely incorporating this thought process when talking to other teams, non-tech and tech, about like diversity and, and stuff like that, like measuring our diversity initiatives. So it's very um, widely applicable. But um, so the main goal was to find our target condition as a squad. Uh, where do we want to be? And it's certainly difficult to establish a goal without context, without an understanding of where we are now. And so to figure out um, our baseline, we sat down and answered a few questions as a group. Um, so the first question, um, what do we deliver? Seemingly easy question, right? Yet myself and the squad um, initially struggled to answer this right away. It definitely didn't roll off our tongues. So we looked at our past and listed out integration projects um, and that we delivered and services that we currently maintain. It includes um, Uber, Last.fm, uh, SoundHound, Twitter, Hashtag Music, um, among, among others. Um, the most critical um, is certainly our Facebook login and sign up um, registration. As I've hinted before, about 70% of our user base logs in via Facebook. Um, the rest is an uh, email login, which um, my team doesn't, um, does not own. The next question is, for whom do we produce said product or service? And who actually defines our work? At Spotify, um, we believe that leadership is meant to convey a vision, and the squad is meant to implement that vision um, in a manner that they choose. Um, there isn't micromanagement, there's a lot of trust, actually. Um, but our lead team defines the direction that our squad takes, um, so they're certainly one of our customers. Um, also, there are many um, integrations we've done, a lot of external partners. Thankfully, the squad's a bit shielded from direct communication, but um, that makes our business development team um, and indirectly the partners themselves our customers as well. But who depends on us? Um, who actually uses our work, product, or service, or whatever? So yes, 70% of users um, log in via Facebook, um, and it's safe to say it's a pretty integral um, system to the Spotify platform. Um, we certainly can't fuck it up when um, Facebook makes breaking changes to their login protocol or API, which they often do unannounced. <laughs> and I've had to live patch our servers because of Facebook. <laughs> but there are um, other teams within um, the company that plug in to our system for social aspects, like um, sharing um, to Facebook within the platform. Moving on, um, the next question is about expectations. Um, what do our customers actually expect from us? Um, when trying to answer this question, it occurred to us that we never, we, we never actually asked them what, our expect what their expectations were. And so we did. We wanted to know exactly what was important to them with what we deliver. Um, was it on-time delivery? Was it predictive versus productive? Um, do they expect solutions to problems that they don't even know existed? Um, what were their expectations on quality, on usability, other measures? Were there expectations with how we work as a squad? Did they want updates on progress and problems. Um, so we couldn't ask all our customers, right? We have 75 million customers. <laughs> and um, expectations would be different um, among our various customers for the team. Internal teams expected our Facebook service to be reliable and scalable. Business development wanted us to be clear on what we can fe feasibly implement, which is definitely hard for a web developer to adequately <laughs> say, appropriately say how long something will take, right? <laughs> And it's safe to assume that users will want to log in or sign up via Facebook if they so choose, and for it to just work. Um, so moving on, the, uh, the last question was simply, um, did we meet those expectations? How do we, um, how do we know we've met those expectations? Um, it, this is where we sort of stopped dead in our tracks, right? We, um, no, we didn't know if our services could um, handle the extra load, or if slash when users couldn't log in. Um, or how many users have activated Spotify with uh, Uber, and of those, does the experience actually work? 
So um, being uh, people that have an affinity for tech and automation, uh, we naturally implemented a technical solution. So um, feedback loop, um, very generic term, not just tech. Um, we, uh, feedback loop is um, to understand, the, I guess, the feedback given. Um, for our squad, um, one of our main feedback loops um, that we chose was metrics. Um, we all wanted those snazzy looking dashboards, the eye candy graphs, and visuals using the latest technology that will probably be obsolete tomorrow. But uh, in all seriousness, we wanted um, an immediate visual of various metrics. Um, but what do we want to see? What questions do we want to answer? So in line with the idiom, um, um, to throw spaghetti on the wall to see what sticks. Um, the squad uh, brainstormed for a while, um, uh, trying to come up with questions that we would like to answer. Um, so some ideas included sign up or offflow abandonment, uh, Facebook connected users, the percentage of total users and the trend over time, uh, percent of users that um, signed up through Facebook per hour, day, week, we didn't even know what the frequency should be, Facebook related errors, which is a lot. <laughs> Um, daily active users by partner or feature, um, registration, subscription rate, referrals by partner, uh, web API usage by partner. Um, we even have, like, we really wanted, like, a squad-focused Twitter when you search for, like, Uber and Spotify to basically see what people are complaining about that, like, neither Uber or I or our team could, like, see in our logs. Um, we wanted to know outstanding JIRA issues, um, request count by um, internal requesting service or team. So you group these metrics um, uh, into buckets, like usage, system health, business performance. Uh, these buckets eventually um, became their own, or are becoming their own dashboard, cycled through our big office monitors like everyone sort of has. But um, we also created a few new uh, processes uh, based on these questions. Um, one of the process um, reviews our progress as a squad. Um, every uh, retrospective, we will look at a couple of metrics that deals with the squad performance, like how many bugs were closed in the past sprint period. Um, we will also judge if this metric, um, if we want to continue seeing this metric, if we can actively improve upon it. Like um, maybe we only closed uh, two bugs this week, but it it's because it took us two days to acknowledge one bug, right? Um, and what if new, um, if any um, measurable items um, should we look at for our next retrospective? Um, another is to have goal targets um, for every integration project that we do. For example, we um, will know we're successful when we have, with this integration, when we have X amount of new users within the first two weeks. Um, it's true that this sort of goal line can only be judged um, based on historical user acquisition numbers. Um, so we basically, so we definitely have to do some work. <laughs> but um, it, this will feed into our retrospectives, and especially once the project is complete, like how did we do? Um, we also have a few post-integration questions um, for business development folks to ask of our external uh, partners on behalf of the squad, like um, understanding our responsiveness, how our developer tools are, um, if, th if they met their goals. Um, and um, we, may, uh, we may think an integration was like super successful, but on their end, not so much, which has definitely happened to us before. So um, we've only been caring about metrics for, um, since the beginning of the year. So this certainly is only the beginning for us. Um, but it allowed us to iterate and give us a hard look at what we track and why. You can track everything that moves, but will you get inundated? Certainly, um, certainly so if you count every single leaf of every branch of all the trees in the forest. Um, so how can you tell what's important and what's just noise? And so this goes back to understanding your customer's expectation and essentially boils down to business value. How can you maintain and improve upon business value of your service or product? How does counting every Facebook connected user help us better ourselves? So when thinking about implementing various metrics of our feedback loops, um, I came across various questions to help me see the forest for the trees. So when creating a new metric, how do metrics map to business goals? Um, do we lose money or lose so much money if, um, if the Facebook's login service isn't up? Um, how do you prioritize different goals um, with what you want to drive? What's most important? Does it mean that you're going to neglect others or just allocate time by priority? Is this new integration project more important to pay attention to than other ones? And that's fine at it, if it is, but you're just going to have to prioritize. How can we create dashboards that are actually actionable? What is the goal, and more importantly, how can we drive that goal? 
are just going to say, oh, look, Facebook sign-up service is down. Let's go have lunch. When uh, representing metrics, um, how do we correctly measure what we care about? We have to break out the old statics or statistician book or whatever, statics books, to like, understand like, how to best represent all the metrics that you take. Um, we have so many tools to help us create um, gauges, counters, meters, histograms, timers, but what representation is best for that question or metric? When actually consuming them, how often do you check on metrics? Um, dashboards, never looked at, which is a common problem I found in my team. Um, they just be become like background noise. Um, so how do you make dashboards more visible, more in your face? Uh, should someone be responsible like once a week to like a goalie? Do you make them more visible by slapping them up on the TV monitor, which I found does not entirely work, especially if it's right in front of me, I just kind of ignore it. Or perhaps you um, have email snapshots sent out to the team, but maybe they're automatically filtered away, or you're like me and auto-archive all unread emails. Uh, being a bit introspective, um, for the things that we don't reach 100% of our goals, um, we need to assess the difference. Why does it exist? Is it even solvable? If you look at dashboards, what actions are you actually going to take? Um, do you even create a dashboard if a goal or an alert isn't set up, or if no action will be taken? Probably not. What about unknowns? What is a known? Um, do we, uh, we know that X amount of iOS users have connected their accounts to Uber, but how many don't use it because the driver has an Android phone? or the driver just isn't aware of the service. And how do you approach those unknowns? Are you comfortable with, it, with them? Or are you, is it even worth it to explore them? So bringing back to this slide, um, ultimately the goal in us um, answering these questions is to give us both um, a shortened decision-making cycle as well as a more informed decisions about um, strategy and partnerships. It's super easy to get lost in the forest, and it doesn't help us that um, we can get all this instant feedback that all these visualizations just look awesome. But in essence, um, but we're in essence placing current values in historical context in order to see patterns developing. How long on average does it take for the team to implement a new integration? Do our customers or ourselves expect a shorter turnaround time? Um, do we wish to just be able to appropriately estimate the time and work on, um, on the work that it takes for such a project? Um, or maybe which internal team do we have to educate about rate limits on our service? And the win here um, with these feedback loops, um, these thoughtfully implemented metrics, um, we can use these goal lines and alerts to create a more efficient team. Um, we'll deliver higher quality software since we'll get immediate feedback on any bugs um, that we introduce, um, any system that fails, and, and the like. Um, but before I answer this question, before I wrap up, um, I do need to be a good friend. Um, with all these um, questions and context in your mind, um, you should go to Henrik's talk tomorrow. Um, it's at 11.45, um, and it's about practical, it's titled Practical Logging and Metrics, and it's basically the technical complement to this talk. So, all right, um, to answer this question, should you track everything? Very anticlimactic answer. Probably. <laughs> Only if um, you define a goal, you can define an action if, um, if you haven't met that goal, and, um, and if you actually pay attention to it. I know, anticlimactic, but <laughs> within reason, right? So um, thank you. I hope um, you took away something, and I think I have one minute for questions. Or how about we just like go out and go get some wine, and you can find me if you have questions, yeah? All right, thank you.